What do I post on social media? If you are one of those farm businesses that feels like you're very willy-nilly about what you post in your social media marketing, then this episode is for you. I want to show you that there should be a strategy behind your content. And we're going to walk through the different categories of content that definitely should be in your routine, but we're also going to talk through some key principles that should be guiding your strategy. Let's get started. Hey there, this is Corinna Bench and welcome to the My Digital Farmer podcast. In today's market, it's not enough to just grow your product. You've got to know how to sell it too. Welcome to the My Digital Farmer podcast, where we reveal online marketing strategies and tips to help farmers like you get better and more confident at marketing. Learn how to find more customers, increase your sales, and build a strong brand for your farm. Let's start the show. Well, welcome to episode 278 of the My Digital Farmer podcast. I am your host, Corinna Bench, one of the farmers at Shared Legacy Farms out in Elmore, Ohio. I'm also the founder of MyDigitalFarmer.com, which is all about trying to help other farmers like you get more confident in your marketing and sales strategies so that you can grow a profitable business. How's everyone doing today? Welcome back to the show. Big shout out to all of my regular listeners my binge listeners. And if you're new to the show, I'm really glad you're here. Welcome to the community. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. You're going to want to do that. And then go check out some of my back issues you can scroll through. I've got over 250 of them now. And I'm sure you can find something there that piques your interest. If you're really new to the marketing space, though, and you need kind of a 101 crash course, I recommend that you uh, go listen to the first 10 Or even better, get onto my email list because when you do, I'm going to send you a weekly email for like three months that's going to walk you through the marketing jungle and kind of get you onboarded into what you need to know. And you can do that by going to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash subscribe. I get really good reviews for that. So um, definitely take advantage of that. Today's episode is sponsored by my friends at Local Line. Switch to Local Line and grow your farm to new heights this season. Local Line is the most comprehensive sales software built for farmers and food hubs. Its features include e commerce, automated inventory management, subscriptions, a website builder, point of sale, and more, helping you increase your sales and streamline your processes. So, whether you're a CSA farmer, or you sell meat, you run a food hub, or maybe you sell wholesale or offer a herd share. Local Line has the tools and features that you need to succeed. We're a big fan. Are you looking to switch to a sales software that does it all? Subscriptions start as low as $49 a month with no setup fees or sales percentages. That's huge for me. Plus, if you join Local Line today, your onboarding manager will migrate your storefront at no cost so you can be up and running in no time, even in the middle of the season. As a bonus, if you are a podcast listener, Local Line is also offering a free premium feature for one year with your subscription when you use my coupon code MDF2024. So go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash local line and then enter the coupon code MDF2024. Make the switch today. And now back to the show. Well, happy September, everyone. How is it already September? Is anyone else feeling like it just flew by? By the time you listen to this episode, we will be in week 12 of our CSA season. We have an 18-week CSA, so we'll be coming close to the end. In fact, I'm going to start thinking about my early bird renewal signups. I have a whole promotional campaign that I build every fall for that and... It's not that hard anymore. I just kind of rinse and repeat it mostly, but I do have to start thinking about that and give that a good four or five hours of my time um, coming up. So that is up on deck. It's been a great season for us wholesale-wise. This is um, the first year that we're really starting to scale that, and it's very exciting. We're going through some of the growing pains that come with that in terms of making some capital investments to 
help those margins out in the future and starting to figure out how many contracts can we take on realistically and in what time of the season is ideal for us, given the fact that we have a heavy workload with CSA. All of that stuff is kind of stuff you figure out just by going through it a few seasons, right? But it's exciting to watch more and more of our farm team kind of shifting and working on some of that as well during the main season and and watching the systems build, right? Like like in every business, the, the, the secret as you mature is to figure out systems. And I'm noticing the systems are forming with wholesale. It's very exciting. So as we get better and better at that, I will eventually one day um, bring that onto the show and start incorporating that into some of these episodes. Uh, But I want to wait until we have some experience with that and we're beginning to make connections with other farmers who do that really well too. So of course, I love to bring on other farmers and they can share their wisdom. So more to come on that. Today, I wanted to focus on social media. This has been on my list to talk about for a while, and I keep bumping it down. And I decided I need to talk about this before the main season is is over, because I want you to be able to implement some of this before, you know, Christmas. And what I thought I would focus on is what to post on social media, what, what kinds of content should be in your rotation on a regular basis. Now, I am not going to be talking about paid ads today. That is a whole separate thing and strategy. I'm going to be focusing mostly on organic social media. I have a lot of farmers who are still kind of in the beginning stages of building their business who listen to this podcast. And I know that social media is one of your primary ways that you market your business, if not the only way. And so I thought it's important, since that's a huge chunk of my audience, to spend some time talking about what should you be doing on these platforms to leverage them. However, I do want to make sure I say that social media is just one marketing tool that you have in your tool belt But be careful that you don't spend all of your marketing time on social media because there are other tools out there that can be really, really helpful. And we'll talk about what some of those are at the end of the episode. Uh, This is just something that should be in your um, portfolio of marketing tools. Now, The other thing I want to talk about is this metaphor of running a race. I like to think of social media like a relay race. And when you're running your business, you've got several different runners in the relay, several different players that are each playing a part in getting your customer to the conversion, the point of conversion where they actually buy from you. And the first runner that starts out is the runner who's just trying to get the attention of your ideal customer, right? They're trying to attract the customer to the brand, and they are running that baton around the track. And to me, that's sort of what social media is like for a farm business. It is one of the batons in the relay race. But once you capture the attention of your customer, and they're following you, and you get them onto your email list, then that baton gets passed on to the next player in your marketing machine who can then take that customer to the next level and get them to kind of warm up to you, and then eventually they see your first offer and they decide to buy. I don't know if social media's job is to be all four legs of the relay race. I I think it's just one baton, and that there are other ones we need to pass the customer on to eventually. So that's my opinion. There may be other people out there who disagree. Are there, is there a place for social media to, to be a conversion tool that actually causes a person to see your post and buy right there on the site? Yes, I know that happens, but I don't think it happens as often. I see social media predominantly as a top of the funnel tool, something that's 
attracting people into the fold, making them aware that you exist. And then if you set up your marketing machine right in your business, you've got other batons, you've got other players in that relay who can take it from there. Now, if you have the capacity to run paid ads, then this is a slightly different conversation because I think a good agency or a good you know, person on your team who knows how to run ads well could help you see conversions from social media um, more quickly. They can accelerate that journey around the track. But in general, I think if we're talking about organic types of content on social media, um, we're really looking at more of a top of funnel approach. And not to expect something out of social media that it may not be able to give you. This is more of a long game and an engagement platform, okay? So let's start out with my first tip um, before I jump into the content. I want to make sure you ask this question. What platform are your people actually on? We make an assumption, I think, that at least I did for a while. Oh, my my people are on Instagram because I like to go on Instagram. <laughs> That's my preferred platform. It's so much it's so much more fun and I can make prettier pictures and I have more options in terms of how to engage with them and I like stories. But I have learned that more of my customers are actually on Facebook and they're not seeing my Instagram stories that I do every single day, right? And it kind of begs the question uh, why am I spending more of my time? My default setting still feels like I want to go over to Instagram and post. And I have to keep reminding myself, no, first go over to your business page on Facebook and post there. And then if you have extra time, you can go to Instagram. But the majority of my people are going to be in my Facebook group where my members are hanging out. And that's my really hot audience, right? And then I have kind of the wider audience that doesn't necessarily know me yet on the business page. Those are people that are my current customers, but also people who are still discovering me and exploring me. So which which platform are you on? And make sure that that's where you're concentrating your time and energy. I know you don't have a lot of time for marketing. I know many of you don't even like doing direct marketing and you see it as a chore. So if you are going to allocate some of your precious marketing time on social media, then please make sure that you have asked this question so that if you are gonna give it, I don't know, an hour a week, then you're on the right platform and you're at least giving it to Facebook or or whichever platform your people are actually hanging out on, okay? Today's podcast is sponsored by Farm Marketing School. This is my monthly membership where farmers can come in and build marketing assets one at a time in special 30-day build projects that I've created for you. There are currently over 14 different projects inside of Farm Marketing School, including your website homepage, building a promo calendar, building a promotional email challenge, testimonial and reviews, how to build a better offer, your email nurture sequence, your lead magnet. There's a sales funnel audit. There's a ton of good stuff in there. And I'm adding new material every couple of months. Plus you get a monthly Zoom meetup with the whole group in the middle of the month. And we'll be doing some book studies off in the fall. I'm really there just to try and empower you and help you get your marketing assets built. So the way this works is you subscribe from month to month. You can cancel whenever you want. You go in, you take the assessment. There's also a crash course in marketing that you can watch to just learn the lingo and the vocabulary and the framework. And then you get started building your first marketing asset. Every project includes a hour long tutorial, a uh, resource folder that gives you lots of templates and examples to help make the process of actually building your own version really fast. And also a project planner to help you time it out and make sure you get everything done. If you want to learn more about how to join Farm Marketing School and try it out, you can go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash FMS. This is my new kind of flagship offer, my community that I'm going to really be pouring myself into over the next six to 12 months. Really excited about it. So I'd love to interact with you. Join at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash FMS. And now back to the show. Now, the second kind of principle I want to point out here as we talk through this discussion of content is to know your goal of social media. And 
to really try to dial in a strategy. Too often in the early years, I would just get onto social media and post things kind of willy-nilly, like, oh, there's a cool picture of something we did today. I'm going to throw it on there. And it was an interesting post, but there wasn't necessarily always a strategy, an overarching strategy behind what I was doing. I was just sort of in the moment, sharing what was going on. And I'm not saying that's bad, okay? If you're doing that, please hear me. I'm not saying that's bad. I certainly still do that. Like, I sometimes love sharing my story of what's going on on the farm and I feel inspired like oh this is really cool I want to tell my people I want to make sure they have a chance to see this and I'll snap the photo or I'll do the video and I'll share it but in addition to that I do have an overarching strategy like I do kind of know what does this platform need to do for shared legacy farms the business what is its role in the marketing machine and am I making sure that what I'm posting is doing that at some point every week too, okay? So I really approach social media as a strategy first and then as a fun place to go and hang out, engage with people. (laughs) And I wanna make sure that you think about it that way too. This means that you're, you're asking the question, what am I actually trying to achieve for my business with the stuff that I'm putting on here. If you haven't asked that question, I'm gonna give you some possible answers. And all five of these may be things you're trying to do, but some of them I think rise to the top. And depending on what level of business you are, and so by that I mean, uh, what stage are you in, in in your business development? I recently did an interview with Andrew from Local Line where he and I talked about how there are kind of three different levels of business. Um, he's looking from behind the scenes of an e-commerce platform and he can see like farm businesses start here and then they develop and graduate into this kind of business and then they ultimately become this kind of business. So depending on which level you're at, you're going to see a different goal of social media. A, big, a brand new startup farm business is going to use social media in a different way is going to need social media to do things for it that are different than a, a business that's been doing, uh, doing business like mine for 15 years, right? So let's walk through what some of these goals might be. And the first one that I wrote down was, I think social media is there to help you attract your ideal customer. It's a traffic source. It's where a lot of your customers are spending time. And so this is classic marketing. We go and and participate in interruption marketing, right? Where we interrupt the stream with something going on at our farm and try to get them to see to see our business and to be attracted to it. If they're the right kind of customer that would click with our business, they'll be attracted to that content. So that's where you're thinking about if I'm at the beginning stage of my business and I just need customers, then you're really thinking through that lens. You're thinking, what can I post that's going to attract the ideal customer that's going to buy something, right? That's another key thing. Like we're qualifying our leads here. We want to attract a customer who will actually spend money with us, not someone who's looking for the best deal and doesn't want to spend money on high quality food, right? So what do we need to post in order to achieve that, to attract that kind of client? Um, Your content also has to speak to that ideal customer's desire, or maybe they have a problem that your particular product solves for them. And so that's also kind of kind of going into your, your head as you're thinking through what do I post, right? So really knowing who is that customer that I'm trying to attract, and my purpose is to put stuff up here that's going to catch those eyeballs, okay? The second possible goal would be to make people product aware. I think there's a lot of merit to that particular goal. So some of the content you're putting onto your stream is uh, just pictures of your product, uh, pictures of your customers using your product, so that a person can come to your page and quickly see, 
oh, they're a farm, <laughs> or oh, they sell chicken, right? Is that obvious based on the stuff that you're posting? So making people at a very general level kind of aware of what you sell and the, the, the problem that you solve. The third possible goal is to pitch offers. Uh, I see a lot of this, like almost like this is the default setting for many of you that I'm just going to use it as a place to constantly let people know what's for sale, what's for sale, what's for sale, here's what's in our store. And that certainly has a place, like that's part of the product awareness too, like here's what we have um, on deck this week. <clears throat> but it's not the only thing that we should be posting, right? Otherwise, that comes off as very uh, interruptive to a person's experience on social media where they're there to hang out with friends and family and they're constantly seeing stuff about how you can buy this. Um, but we do need to have that out there for sure. The fourth possible goal, and this for me is the main one uh, as a business that I think is probably more like level two, maybe moving into level three now, um, to get my uh, ideal customer onto my email list. That is, for me, the primary purpose of social media. So I think that has a lot of merit for level one and level two farms. The stuff that I'm putting out there is really trying to attract that new customer. And I invite them to come onto the list on a regular basis. If you look hard through my feed, you'll see that shows up a lot. The, the link to, to sign up for my, to, to subscribe to my email list shows up a fair amount. I want to say like 50% of the time. And then finally, uh, another goal might be social proof. So one of the things that makes a, a customer more likely to decide to buy your product is that they'll need to see proof that other people like it, that it works for them. Almost like a herd mentality, right? Like if we see a whole bunch of people doing something, then we want to join in on the fun. We want to get on, on the bandwagon. And so this is the nature of social media. It's designed to do that well for us because it encourages people to like things, to give emojis, to share comments and engage. So if you are able to show through your content that a lot of people are engaging with you, then that statistic is anecdotally going to help a potential new client say, wow, there's a lot of people that follow this, this business. They must be a thing. Or wow, look at all those people commenting I didn't realize they had such a following. They must be really popular. There must be something to them, right? So I think that social media can function as a social proof agent for us. And that may be worth its weight in gold. Uh, that may be the reason why we want to keep focusing some energy and time on it because it helps uh, prime that, pump that engine along. Okay, but in general, in my opinion, I think the primary goal uh, benefit of social media for at least a level one or a level two business is still the top of the funnel. It's that attracting your ideal customer, getting into the right traffic source, getting the right eyeballs on your stuff and getting people onto your email list. That's the primary baton that that this tool, social media, um, serves for your business. Can it close deals? Can it make conversions? Uh, yes, it can. It can be that baton as well. But I think that most farm businesses will find that it's not, it doesn't do that as well as it does attracting a client and getting people onto your list. Your email list or your text SMS li list is a primary way for you to actually close the deal and get people to buy on a weekly basis when you can get into their inbox or onto their phone. So um, just be aware of what social media's um, abilities are, what you can expect from it, and what maybe might be too big of an ask. Okay, something to think about. This is the part of the episode where I also want to ask the question, do you need to be on social media? Because I know some of you are asking that. Some of you want to say, want me to say no. You want me to give you permission to not have to invest in that tool. And so I'm going to, to take my little stab at this and I'll probably get emails about this. But I'm going to say if you are brand new in business, like you're trying to start a farm business, I think you do need to be on social media. And the only reason I say that is because 
I think it's a business accelerator if you know what you're doing. Um, because so many people are on Facebook or Instagram, it's it's unfortunately um, where a lot of people are spending their free time. I don't know, this is just an aside, but it just makes me sad when I walk around or I go out to dinner and I see like couples looking at their phones while they're sitting and eating dinner together and they're not even talking to each other or just the way that family's hanging out. They're, they're hanging out together on their devices. It's just really interesting. My son was telling me that there's a law now in Ohio, which is banning the use of phones in the classroom. So they aren't allowed to have their phones at all in school. And he's like, mom, it's the weirdest thing. People are actually talking to each other now, like between classes and After, you know, when we're sitting there waiting for the bell to ring, we're actually all talking to each other. Anyway, that's just a random aside. But I think so many people are on social media that it is kind of an ideal place to go and attract and find your customer. So that's kind of why I feel like if you're a brand new business, you you probably should be on social media because you'll you'll grow and accelerate your list growth a whole lot faster. Now. That being said, I'm not sure the ROI for organic social media is super great. I think there are probably other ways to grow that that have a higher return on investment. Um, Things like paid search or like Google paint, you know, Google ads or influencer marketing is another one I think that might actually do pretty well. Um, And then, of course, email marketing is sort of a big one for me. Um, sadly, I see a lot of farmers spending like 90% of their marketing time on social media, on organic social media. And I just want to bring that into the room. Like, I'm not sure that that's the only tool, the only baton that we should be focusing on. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the wisest use of your time. If you can see a wickedly good ROI, then go for it and keep doing it. But if you're not tracking those metrics... Um, I, I just don't know. Maybe maybe it's actually not bringing you a lot of sales. Do you know for sure? Are you looking at that? And there might be some other ways that you could be spending that precious marketing time if you only have like three hours a week. Maybe it should be spent 80% of it on email marketing or building offers and 20% on social media. So something to think about. Okay, um, let's talk now about what do you actually post. And this is actually going to be a list. So I have some notes here. Looks like I have close to 10 different topic ideas here that I think are categories of content that should be in your rotation. Now, notice I say rotation. So this is this is where I go back to that idea that you should have a strategy. This should not just be I wake up in the morning and I'm walking through the fields and I see a gorgeous picture of fennel or I see my team harvesting product and I snap a picture and I post it like great you can do that too but when you back up and take a look at your overall messaging that's going on on social media for the 30 days in your particular month there should be some some basic things that are happening on a regular basis on a rotation and that's what I'm going to talk you through right now okay Intermittently scattered among those rotational content pieces, core pillar content pieces, you can be throwing in those pictures of fennel (laughs) and the team packing the CSA box. But um, let's talk about what some of these basics are, okay? The first one that I wrote down is pictures of your product. And ideally, these should be gorgeous pictures of your product. In In the farming space, at least in the vegetable space, I feel really lucky because... I I mean, my product is already gorgeous in itself, so there's not a lot I have to do to dress it up and make it look nice. If you're a meat farmer, it's a little more challenging. I feel your pain. Um, but we want, this is that whole product aware thing, right? Like we want people to know what it is that we sell. And so we have to tantalize them with, isn't this gorgeous? We want them to salivate when they see our food. So product pictures, definitely a, a category that needs to show up there. Luckily, many of you are probably already doing that because I know a, a big chunk of farmers, when they use social media, are using it to pitch pitch offers. And so you're putting pictures of your product. So hopefully you've got that one down. Um, the second one is 
customers using your product. That is a slight difference. Um, this could be, this is called what I, what I call user-generated content or UGC. This could be an actual photo of a customer with the product in their kitchen. If you can get them to kind of share that with you, awesome. Or a customer picking up the product or smiling as they're grabbing the tomatoes from your farm stand. Showing a picture of a customer is really powerful. Uh, but a you know, second best to that would be showing a photo of something they've made with your product. And that will help a future customer do something called mirroring. Well, they, they, it's like they're holding up a mirror and seeing, seeing your picture that you've posted or your video, and they're imagining themselves staring at themselves in the mirror, you know, making that. Okay. It's a, it's a psychology thing. So we want to have some pictures of product being used by the customer or the finished product when it's on the plate what does that look like? Or if it's a bunch of flowers, like staged in their home, like where are they putting the flowers? Or the moment they're passing the flowers to their grandma when they visit her at the nursing home, right? Those kinds of those kinds of social proof photos are really powerful. The third kind of category is pictures of you. Pictures of you, the farmer, showing your face. This is this is the stuff that gets the highest engagement on my Facebook page, hands down. And it's not even always pictures of Farmer Kurt. It, pictures of my kids go bonkers too. You may have strong feelings about whether or not you want to do that. So follow your heart there. But we just had this, the start of school a few weeks ago. And I always snap a picture of my kids first day of school. And, you know, you share that. And everyone goes crazy. It get, gets a ton of comments. And people who are like, oh, my gosh, he grew five inches. And... I have so many people that have been following us at this stage in our business, right? We're 16 years into it, who have literally been with us since the beginning or for the last 10 years. They remember when my kids were little toddlers playing on pedal tractors. And now here's Jed driving his own car to school, right? And there's this nostalgia and there's this, oh, I've been with you a long time, this loyalty building kind of moment there. So um, pictures of your kids. Uh, anytime I snap a picture of Farmer Kurt, people go crazy. They want to see your face. They want to see your eyes. There's kind of a connection point that happens when they can see your eyes. There's trust that builds. So don't be afraid to show pictures of you. Now, if you have team members that are kind of an extension of the farm business, show their pictures too, right? If, if there's a, a key site host or a key person at your farmer's market that's basically functioning as the face of the farm, pictures of that person as well, right? So that's a whole category. Number four, something that should be in your rotation on a regular on a regular basis. Actually, this is, I think, should be near the top. How, how the ordering process works. I don't do enough of this, but I've gotten a lot better at it lately. I have noticed that there can be confusion on the part of a new customer coming in. They don't know how this works. How do I buy from you? Where can I find you? <laughs> Where, which markets are you at? If you do online sales, how does online sales work? Are there, are there windows of time where I can order and where the store closes and I can't order anymore? Or when do I, how do I pay? And when do I check out? And do I meet you there? Do you deliver? Like, there's just a lot of confusion for a brand new person. So have a little compassion and empathy, right? So I feel like I'm constantly <laughs> having to remind myself that I have to repeat myself. I have to, to say it over and over again. Hey, did you know you can buy from our online store every week? <laughs> hey, we have an online store. Did you know? It's time to order from the online store. Make sure you order by Monday at 6 a.m. Our online store closes at Monday at 6 a.m. for these two sites and Wednesday 6 a.m. for this site. Oh, that is so confusing and I hate that, but that's the reality. And I have to say that over and over and over again because every week I have new people discovering my Facebook channel, new people who are discovering my farm, and I cannot assume that they know that information. So this is stuff you've got to have in the rotation over and over again. You can literally copy and paste the same copy, maybe switch out the picture, but maybe you don't even switch out the picture, okay? But this is stuff that's got to be in there. It's easy to fall into this trap and think, oh, all of these people that are on my on my page, 
They, they, they saw this post yesterday already. I, I don't, I don't want to say it again because they're going to get bored. I just said that two days ago. And my friends, I want to remind you that like the organic, the organic feed is like 2% of your people, 2 to 3%, maybe it's a little higher now, are actually seeing the stuff organically in their feed that you post. That's a really small amount. It's like under 5%, okay? So the average generic follower of your page is not seeing every post that you put there unless they take the time to go to your page and see everything that you put there. And that's important to remember. So get over this fear that, oh, I can't keep posting the same information over and over again because I don't want to tire out my my customer. I, I just said that the other day. Yes, you did just say that the other day, but the likelihood that that person saw it is very slim. You can repeat yourself and you're always having new people come into the funnel. So you've got to keep telling them the same stuff. Okay. You're going to be repeating yourself. That is what good marketers do. Okay. The next category is question posts. And this is more for the purpose of engagement. A question post is where you are just putting a question on the screen and the whole point is to try and get them to leave a comment. And I usually use the post style that's within Facebook itself. Sometimes I'll put the question on an image in Canva and then post it on there. But usually I just use the the tool that's right inside Facebook. I feel like it pops more and it seems to get more engagement. These are questions that I actually collect on a special Google Sheet. If If I can't think of one live, I have a place that I can go and look at stuff that I've used in the past or I kind of have a running list of of questions that that are waiting to be used for the first time. I like to throw these in at least one a week. The next category is FAQs, frequently asked questions. This is very similar to the one I said before about uh, how how does the buying process work? How can people buy your stuff? What is your short list of FAQs? And you've got to be repeating these over and over and over again. So if you've got three or if you've got five, then just schedule them so that they're once a week, they're getting answered. For us, the frequently asked questions off the top of my head are, are you organic? Um, Where are your pickup sites? When are your pickup sites? How does the online store work? I think those are the big ones that I answer over and over again. Okay, so for you, it's going to be different and just know what they are and just keep bringing them up. The next category is testimonials. I talked about this earlier, social proof is important. It's one of the things that makes a person decide to to take action and move a little bit closer in the customer journey with you. In many cases, it's the last thing that people need to see before they're ready to spend money with you for the first time. So we want to have those periodically in our social media feed. I think the best place for testimonials to live is also in our email uh, marketing as well. That's actually when a person is a little bit warmer and they're kind of more ready to buy something. I think that's where the social proof content really is powerful, but we can definitely have it inside of our social media. This could be pictures of customers uh, using your product. It could be a picture of something that they've made with their product and you can reference that customer. It could be a screenshot of an actual review that someone left for you. All different options. Okay, the next one is a big one for me. This is the lead magnet. This is the moment two or three times a week where I am inviting people on social media to get onto my email list because I have a pretty amazing email marketing machine behind the scenes that will take that person and groom them, warm them up and make them ready to buy. And that sort of happens on autopilot. So I want to get them, I want to pass the baton on to that ru- to that runner, right? Um, So I have lots of different ways that I get people on my list. I have outright lead magnets that are like PDF guides or training videos that I have created. And the only way you can get them is if you give me your email address. And I do periodically publish those. I have like a canning guide, for instance, a canning equipment checklist that I put out this time of year because I know a lot of people are canning or they're thinking about learning how to can. And that also tells me that here's a person who might buy bulk produce from me, right? So I'll give them those offers when they come around. Um, 
So that's just an example of a very specific kind of lead magnet. But I also have a very generic call to action where I say, hey, if you want to know what we're going to have available in our online store from week to week, get on my produce availability list. And here's the link. Okay, that doesn't have anything fancy. That one does really, really well for me. It's actually uh, the one that does the best, is doing the best right now, that in the A to Z vegetable storage guide that lives on my website. So uh, I have two different kinds of lead magnets. But either way, you've got to be making people aware of how they can get on your list. And these are simple and easy to stick onto your schedule. You just copy and paste them, the same stuff you posted the month before, and you just stick them into the slots when you schedule them so that they're happening several times a week. I, I aim for three times a week, but if you do it even more than that, test it out and see how it does. Okay, I have a couple more. The next one is inspirational content. And this is one that I didn't used to use, but I have since discovered its power. I have noticed that people want to be inspired. They want to feel good. (laughs) They want someone to remind them of their possibility. And I like to follow people that that are larger than life and that remind me that I'm powerful and that speak a word of wisdom and hope into my heart. Are you like that too? And so I want to challenge you to think about what if you could be that sort of catalyst for someone? What if you could be that kind of a messenger? And if that was part of what you gave people on social media was your wisdom, your story of you know, I'm following my heart. Uh, I, I can do hard things. Um, the simple life, right? All these lessons that you have to share, but speak them with a word of inspiration and invite them to take your lesson and like become that as well, that they have it within them. They have the power within to, that within them to become this thing too. Uh, I'm thinking of my friend, Lindsay Beale and Wild Root Flowers company and like so many of her posts are inspirational posts and there's a reason why she's got you know tens of thousands of followers because I want to be like her right I want to think like her I, I want to be that version of her in my own life and so when we can speak like that and we can speak to people's hearts I think that can do a lot to grow your audience and your customer base because they they ultimately aren't just buying your product right they're buying the transformation that you are for them. And so show them that light. And then my final uh, topic idea is somewhat similar to that, but it's uh, a little bit different, a little bit nuanced. I wrote down secret knowledge, secret wisdom or lost secret knowledge. And I don't think this is something that every business would be able to use as a category, but as farmers, this is something that we have that is special. We have this lost knowledge that many people in our culture have forgotten. It's things like how how to bake a great loaf of sourdough, how to um, grill something besides hamburger meat and make it taste amazing, how to heal people with herbs, how to can food, how to ferment cabbage, how to do a lot of these homesteading types of things. And they're attracted to us because we know this information. We are practicing these lost character skills that the modern world hasn't valued. And I think there's a realization among people now that hey, those things are important. The, the, the things that you learn in the rural life or in farm life, like the hard work ethic and even just the practical skills of knowing how to cut wood and uh, uh, drive a tractor or my, my kids can fix things. It's so impressive. They're problem solvers. These are all things that come because of the life that we lead because of the chores we have every day, the responsibility that forms. 
And that kind of life, those kind of lessons, that kind of wisdom is markedly missing in our culture today. And you are the keeper of it. So when you can share some of that, people are hungry for it. So I want you to just play around with that. I want you to spend some time thinking about what what is that secret knowledge that I have that I take for granted? What are those things that people are impressed by that I seem to know or maybe the qualities that I seem to possess or that my kids possess? And is there a way that you can talk more about that or share what is it that you're doing in your life to create those character values in your family and in yourself. Think on that. I think that's powerful. Okay, so those were my topic ideas. I want to finish off by just uh, sharing a few final tips when it comes to posting social media organically. Uh, Pay attention to the cadence. So I think you should be posting every single day. You'll notice that if you post more often, it does seem to help out in general in your sales funnel. I've heard that over and over again from from farmers. Um, But there is a happy medium, like you don't need to be going crazy. So when the season is hot and heavy, there are times when I might post twice a day in on Facebook. But typically, it's once a day. And in the off season, it might be more like three times a week. It's not as often when I don't have anything to sell. Um, I am definitely a on the scheduling bandwagon now, like I used to do it all like in real time, but I now take one day a week where I go into Meta Business Suite and I spend about 30 minutes and I'm using photos from the week before, but also photos from my Google Drive that I've organized. And I'm just scheduling stuff into into the, the feed based on some of these categories that I've shared with you. Now, I will also pay attention to my promotional calendar. So I'll look at what's on deck, like what are things that I need to sell, what's coming up in three or four weeks that I need to start teasing so that when it's time to sell it, um, it's already sort of been warmed up in them. So I am looking at what are my offers, what are my promotions, what's coming up soon, what are the seasons so that I can mix that in to the content. Remember again that only like two to three percent of the things that you are posting are showing up organically in their feed. Unless your your customers are taking the time to actually come to your page, most of them are not seeing what you post. And so it's okay to repeat yourself. You're going to feel tempted as you schedule things out here to not say stuff as often because you're like, oh, I just I just posted that very same copy like seven days ago. It's okay. You can do it again. All right. Switch out the picture if you like, but it's okay to repeat yourself. Now, I keep track of my posts on a Google Sheet. I don't know if you have to do that, but I think it's helpful to spend some time or even to pay someone Uh, to go back through your whole feed for like an entire year and just to log what what was posted, you know, what day it was posted, uh, what time, what some of the engagement metrics were, and, and the actual copy of the post, what was the graphic that was used, or what was the video. I think that can be helpful. Now, some of you are like, oh my God, you're crazy. Fair enough. But like I did that And what I love about it, here's just, you know, the pros and cons here. The the pro is that I use it when I'm sitting down to schedule. I go back and look at what did I post back in August? I, you know, give me some ideas and I'll go back and look and I'll, and I'll see some things. Every time I do this every week, I'm like, oh yeah, that was a really great idea. I, I wouldn't have thought of that. I wouldn't have thought to repost that again this month unless I'd gone back and seen it. And I can actually see the metrics on some of them too. I always highlight the rows. Remember, I'm doing this in a Google Sheet. So if there was a a post that was really popular and did really well, I'll actually highlight it because that's a sign like, hey, this one did well, make sure you repeat this. So I'm going back to look at something I did a year ago, but I'm also going back to the month before and I'm copying and pasting the copy that's in that Google Sheet, right? Because I'm I'm literally able to copy the whole thing there and I'm not having to retype it all out. So it is actually a time saver. It does require you to spend several hours going back and finding all the stuff and putting it into that sheet. 
but um, I found that really helpful to do. So something to think about. Um, I wrote down copy and paste the same posts from before. I already said that. So reuse your content. Don't be afraid to do that. Uh, see what did well and highlight that on that Google Sheet. So make sure that as you're building out, if you decide you want to keep track of your posts, uh, make sure you're going back and just putting the metrics in, at least just saying, hey, this one had a lot of comments. If you don't want to put how many comments, that's fine. Um, you can also see a lot of this data inside of Meta Business Suite, right? You can go back and look at things there too. Um, I've also in general noticed that short form video seems to do really well, at least right now on Facebook for me. I am doing less and less long form. I used to do a lot of talking head, um, 15, 20 minute tutorial type things. And I don't do that as much anymore because I feel like the intention for a customer, they're not, they're not coming to social media with the intention to watch a 15 minute training video. Now, when a person decides to go to YouTube, they have a completely different intention, right? I go to YouTube with the intention of learning something, just like I go to my podcast player with the intention of learning something. And so I'm willing to sit down and listen to long form content or watch a longer form content there to learn something. But in social media, I'm scrolling through just to kind of see what's going on. I'm not going to pause and watch a 10 to 15 minute demo video. I'm just not. So keep that in mind as you're creating video content for uh, Facebook that um, I, I just don't know how how much people are, are going there for, with the intention to sit down for a long time and listen to you uh, teach about something. Now, there is value. I just did a whole series of episodes a while back on uh, video. There is value in creating a video on social media for the for the purpose of the replay, okay? So sometimes I will use Facebook Live and do a longer form, maybe five minute demo thing, but I'm not expecting a lot of engagement on the Facebook platform for it. My purpose in filming it was, hey, I wanna have this content for my YouTube channel. And so I'm just gonna film it here on this platform, try to get a little leverage here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna download it and then put it, post it on my YouTube channel where it will live on as evergreen content and that's where it's really gonna get me some traction or I can link to it in a future email um, and so forth. So if you haven't listened to that episode, um, I'll put a link in the show notes for it, but there's a whole episode about how you can use video uh, content that you create on social media uh, in multiple ways after the fact to get a ton of mileage out of it and it's, it's definitely worth listening to. I wrote down here, repurpose photos from the past, that this is a key to t saving time on social media marketing. I have a Google Drive where I keep a lot of my photos and I more and more have done a good job of organizing them. And I will often just go back there and look for my gorgeous photos if I'm like, oh, I need a, a really good picture of a tomato right now because I'm going to do bulk tomatoes. If I don't have time to go out and take a photo of the tomato box, I just go back to that to that folder and I grab it, especially because I'm sitting down and doing a lot of the scheduling, right? So make use of past photos. And it, again, might be worth the time to go through your photo bank and organize them so that you have 10 really good photos of every different kind of vegetable, maybe just five, let's just say five. And then maybe you've got some good photos of some of the key products that you tend to sell again and again, like a tomato canning box, for instance, or I could have five photos in that Google Drive of harvesting tomatoes so that I can repurpose some of those. And as I go through the week and I take new photos, sometimes I, I notice one that's really, really great. I'm like, oh, it's a gorgeous photo. And I will stop there in that moment and I'll actually save it to a special folder on my Google Drive on my phone so that I know that um, I can use that one day in the, in, the, in the future. So repurposing content is where it's at. Like let's help ourselves by creating those systems now so that we can make our save time later, uh, make our lives easier. Okay, um, that's all I got. So I have a resource to help you. Um, I have a, a list of social media post ideas. This is like five or six pages. It's a PDF and it's a ton of different categories of content. Some of them I've mentioned here, but there's some additional ones. 
This is a really great resource. It's very popular with farmers. And you can get that by going to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash social. Just print it out and have it next to you when you sit down and do some of your scheduling. It'll, it'll just unlock you. It'll remind you, oh, yeah, I have those kinds of things that I can do um, as content. Um, this is going to be an entire project, 30-day project build inside of Farm Marketing School. I have not built it yet as of the time of this recording, but it is on deck to be created. Probably in the month of November is when I'm going to release it inside of Farm Marketing School. It'll either be October or November. I may even release it live so that we go through it together as a community live. And for those 30 days, um, if you want and you're in Farm Marketing School, we can make that our project that we focus on together live. Or you can just be in Farm Marketing School and do your own, you know, choose another project and follow that on your own. But I think I'm probably going to run it as a live project build and then it'll eventually live on forever in that platform. But just know that this is something that will be going into Farm Marketing School here in the winter time. Uh, and we'll practice, we'll learn the strategy, we'll practice building the strategy in our own unique for our own unique business, over the course of 30 days, you will actually schedule the posts for your month. You'll plan what they are, you'll schedule them, and you'll learn how to track them. So that will be um, a really cool project coming up. It's one that, it, frankly, has been missing. I, I just feel like it's something I probably should have built a long time ago because it's a lot of times where farmers want to start when they think about marketing. They immediately default to, oh, I should be social media marketing. And so it's a it's a project that I really should have in there. I want to just remind you again, though, that although social media is a baton in the race, it is not the only one. And I'm not even sure it's the main one. I'm not sure it's the one that closes the deal. So it does you no good to post all over social media, my friends, if you don't have a system behind it to carry the baton to the next uh, runner. Okay, and that's why I'm so passionate about helping farmers build a system, why I built Farm Marketing School, uh, because I want you to build the machine. Remember, this is a race, and I want you to build each of the batons in the race. I want you to have a runner that you can pass that baton to. Social media is at the beginning of the race, but we also want to build the system behind social media so when someone gets onto your email list, then what happens, right? What's the process that you can pass that baton onto your email sequence, or maybe it's your text messaging or your ascension ladder? Like, how are you moving people deeper and deeper into your sales funnel so they turn into a super buyer? That is all strategy, my friends. So, I invite you to consider joining for our marketing school this winter. It's coming up soon. I'll have some information here shortly on how you can join that community and be a part of this group of farmers that's working together to build those pieces one by one. All right, that's all I got today. If you want the show notes, you can go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash 278. If you like today's episode, please leave me a review or tell your farmer friends about it in a Facebook group, on a listserv. Help me get the word out that the, the podcast exists. It really does help the show out a ton. And don't forget, I have some free stuff to send your way if you want to get on my email list. I'm going to send you an email every single week for like three months. The emails are in a certain order designed to kind of walk you slowly through the marketing jungle. It's really good. You can get on that list by going to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash subscribe. It's free. If you don't like what I'm sending you or you get annoyed, you can just unsub. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me today, everyone. Have an awesome week. And remember, I believe in you. I want to invest in you. Have a great week. Bye-bye.